Morning everyone. Hello. Hi. I think we're live streaming. Hopefully we are. Um, we're gonna, uh, oh, let me start again. It's all a bit nerve wracking when you first start. I've got all this new technology. Um, welcome to Explore and Draw Online. Um, my name's Luna Shigo and Explore and Draw is an art club that um, was created in 2017 to encourage people to connect to their inner creative. Um, we've been working on the technology behind the scenes so um, we've got this new system and we're trying it out today. Hi mum, <laughs> thanks for your text this morning. Oh my nerves, that really helped me out. I've done a bit of yoga as well. Hi Claire, hi Fiona, lovely to see you. I can't wait to talk about your work in a minute. Um, there is a delay on the messages so I'll see them when I can. Um, I'll respond to them obviously later and if I miss you it's just because I haven't seen it or um, I've just got distracted. Okay, so today I wanted to talk to you about um, a course that I wrote three years ago, just over. Claire came to it. Um, it was called The Art of Self-Discovery and I ran it for six weeks and it, it was a really great success. People loved it. Um, I grew a lot as a person. I had worked at the uh, university, I'd studied in art and design and then I'd worked at the university for eight years and I was in those studios uh, for years, you know, and I took, I tried to take the best of what I learned there um, and what I didn't learn and pop it all into the art of self-discovery. Well, obviously, we can't do it all today. So I want to talk to you today. I've decided to talk to you about some amazing local artists' work. Um, last time on the Easter Explore and Draw, I spoke to you about some unknown female artists, didn't I, unknown, and we all shared information. And all of those videos are on the video page. Hi, Trish. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Claire. I can't talk, I can't wait to talk about your work later. Um, oh, it's lovely to have you all here. Hi, Cathy. Um, I've got your hat on, darling. It was lovely to talk to you the other day on the phone. Um, yeah, I can hear that playing back, Neil. Can you turn that's the volume me. off for me, darling? Me. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. That's on his headphones. <laughs> right, let's get started. So I've forgotten, that's what I mean, it distracts you when you do that. So yeah, I ran this course and it was really just to encourage people to get back to their inner creative because it had taken me a very long time to come back to my art for various reasons. I think you've got to be a little bit selfish in a way, a little bit determined, have willpower and think, yeah, I am going to do that. I am going to give myself some time today. Because as a woman, you know, we, we're we always doing stuff for other people, aren't we? We're looking after the children or we're tidying the house, we're cooking and cleaning. And we all find our creative outlet in that. Um, but it takes time. And also, what your creative brain does is it avoids doing things. So it will put excuses or reasons in the way why you can't connect to your inner creative. It's sort of try and trip you up. And if you realise that's what it's doing, then you can sort of be determined and think, no, I am going to do a little bit of art today. Um, it's been wonderful being online. Neil and I have been listening to the whole of the creative community in Medway. And we've got this fantastic community, haven't we? Um, it's lovely. There's Andre. Hi, Andre. I can't wait to talk about you, uh, your work in a little while. Hi, Jane. Lovely to see you. And Justin. Oh, Michelle. Oh, there's loads of people here. Leah and Sean. Hi, everyone. Oh, it's... It's so good that you're all here. And the beauty of this is people can watch it back later, can't they? So what was I talking about? I can't remember. Oh, this is the problem, isn't it? So what should I do? Should I just... Oh, I've got a few little notes. That might help me out. Right. So there'll always be something to get in the way. You mustn't let the fear of creating something stop you from doing it. 
okay so today I'm going to show you a few ways in and this is why I wanted to talk about the local artists um I was talking to you about wasn't I forgot um I've been enjoying Clea online and other people online the musicians the poets um everyone's been out there uh, doing their thing people have been doing art classes so there's a lot this creative cute community are finding sort of new ways to connect with us all and it's brilliant and we really look forward to that i know a lot of you have been getting fit or cooking a lot so this is brilliant some of us have got time you know a little bit more time um so i want you to try and make some of your time uh to focus on yourself and your art okay and it's infectious like I'm going to talk about Fiona's work later but she was doing it and Mark said her partner was all like it was all oohs and ahs coming from the studio where she was working and then he had a go so it inspired him as well and that's what happens so you know everyone's going to eat your lovely food aren't they but if you do some art maybe they'll think oh, well I'll, I'll have a go at that so um I, the artists I'm going to talk about today, the local artists, are there to inspire you. Um, they're not there to intimidate you, okay, because they're very good, all of them. But they're just there to show you different ways in. So I'm not going to sit here and paint a whole picture for you later. I will do some experimentation. Um, and you can watch lots of videos online if you want to look at some specific subject or something that you're studying, how to do hands, how to do feet. You can watch things online, seek them out, you know, uh, have a look in books. Uh, it's all really great. I, I tend to go for the children's ones because I find they're really simple to understand. And, and then if it goes into my brain, I can get it. So, yeah, keep learning, keep looking. But today is just to really inspire you and have a conversation with you and hopefully you'll get something out of it. If you haven't painted for a, a period of time, you might find that, you know, half an hour is enough. Um, but if you've been building your creative muscle, can I say that? <laughs> um, you know, you could find that you paint all day. Sometimes I'm painting all day. I look at the clock. I think, oh, cool. You know, I've got to get something to eat or make myself a drink because the time just goes. Hi, Keris. I can't wait to see your dragon. I've been waiting for it. There's just a wing left, isn't there? Make sure you do that. And then I wanted to post it, you see. Um, I wanted to give you a very free uh, class today and show you lots of different ways in because I know that when I came back to my art there was this um, need to prove to myself that I was an artist so I studied uh, online um, oil painting and I always used to love painting with acrylics and I got back into that and I'd watch videos on demonstrations and I'd have a go and I learned lots of techniques some of them I'm going to show you today um, and we're going to do I want to do an acrylic painting one and maybe an oil painting one but maybe you can message me and give me some ideas of what you'd like to see me doing I'll consider everything I can't promise anything <laughs> but I will consider it um, and I studied those and I, I spent months painting oil paintings and um, I really enjoyed it. But I've now found something a little bit more immediate because once I proved to myself that I could still paint, um, I still had something, you know, there, then I could let that go and be free. And I think that every artist they come back to their creative self and, you know, they have to prove something to themselves. And then once they've proved that they're free and um, I want, hi, Antoinette, I can see you there. Hi, Anne. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Hi. Hi, Keris. Yeah, so I wanted, um, I saw uh, one of my friends post online the other day, oh, I've tried to do like a seascape and a landscape. It's rubbish. I'm no artist. And I thought, well, 
you're being hard on yourself because the seascape and the landscape is very difficult so just the fact that you've created a drawing one day and then you can't do it the next day doesn't mean you're not an artist you're not creative it just means that we've got to make mistakes and have an experimentation if you can see behind me I've got all these little color charts of what I'm working on at the moment now I've never been one for colour charts, um, I know people do and um, they keep lovely charts, I'm always in admiration of them um, and I've never done that because I can't remember anything so there's no point writing it all down but what I've found with these is that I've got some new colours, some new acrylic paints and I've put them on there and they're a little reminder to me like how strong the colour is and I am beginning to use them. Um, let go of the outcome. A little bit when you go back to your creative self and you have a go of creating after this video don't put any pressure on yourself to do like a four hour painting you might only be five minutes doing one you know um, I've got these little pads like that or you can cut paper to this size maybe sometimes doing something on a small piece of paper based on what I'm going to show you today might that might work for you. That might be a really good thing to do. Um, now, ooh, we've got Jenny here. We've got Pia here all the way from Sweden. Oh, that's fantastic. It's lovely to see you all. Thanks for joining me. Now, I want to talk to you. As I said, we've got some fantastic artists. Oh, I've tried not to rattle too much. So the first person that I wanted to talk to you about today is a local artist, an explorer and drawer, a lovely friend, Andre McDade. And she came to um, Fort Luton um, when we first started Explore and Draw. And I could tell immediately, as soon as she started drawing, that she knew exactly what she was doing. And it was just wonderful to watch. Uh, she would map and measure and she had this system of mapping and measuring oh it was it, she was so intense in the drawing and it was fantastic i couldn't teach andre anything um in fact i'd love to do a class with her where she teaches us um because she's always mapping and measuring and she she's been joining in with the exploring drawers and doing some work at home um and she done this picture here I'm going to do it one by one so this is an absolutely stunning drawing now there's quite a lot in this drawing as you can see um, there's a still life of a pot of I've since discovered that these are some artificial very precious daffodils and this cloth is beautifully done can you see that that's from a, a friend of Andre's from Swahili. So that's a beautiful cloth. And then in the background, you've got this picture that uh, Andre's had a long time of a lady with a sickle, I believe. And then here, you've got the um, life drawing class, uh, not life drawing, the costume life drawing class that we've done the Frida Kahlo, and that was Neil there. And then here, this side, You've got the mirror and all the reflection. You see the light coming through. Well, that when I saw this drawing, I knew it was a very personal piece, an absolutely beautiful piece, and it really got me thinking. This picture does make you have a conversation with yourself. Um, art's very subjective, isn't it? Not only is it beautifully drawn, and you can tell that all of that mapping and measuring has paid off. But it's the way that Andre's used the pencil and the grading and the graduation and she's used the rubber. There's a lot of skill, a lifetime skill really in this work. Um, and I looked at that picture and I, and I thought it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? Like for me, I feel like that lady with the sickle there is like the worker and it's like all of her work is done now. And this painting sort of really reflects Andre's love of art. Um, the mirror is reflecting all the things that are important to her. So the um, this beautiful, I hope that's going to stay, I'm just going to stick that there. 
So this beautiful artificial bunch of daffodils, you know sometimes those artificial flowers, they, they're like real, aren't they? They're stunning. And, and this mirror reflecting back is showing all the things that Andre loves. And I think she's always loved art. And, you know, like all of us, we get we do our work, don't we? I know Andre worked in London and she's come back to her art. And I'm so pleased that she come to explore and draw. And you might want to set up your own little still life and have a go at drawing. And I don't want you to worry if things are not exact. Like I say, this is a particular kind of mapping and measuring and accuracy here. But also, there's a lot of emotion in it. And I, th I think that this um, drawing is very beautiful and, and, and really does speak of the love of art that Andre has. Um, I've printed off some more of your work, Andre. I hope you don't mind. Um, I've had to make them a little bit darker because sometimes they're quite faint. Now, this one... Oh, it's... I've done all this to make it easier <laughs> and it's not is it come on that's it oh you do have to press that to release right so this one was taken at um, explore and draw with Kathy Keith meet the artist at Eastgate house and it was Kathy's shoes it reminded me of beautiful painting you know of like the ballerina shoes and stuff like that look at that Andre always takes on the challenge. She, there's a lot going on in this picture. And sometimes, quite often, there's not enough time to finish, is there, Andre? There's only a couple of hours. But I actually love the fact that so much of it is done and so much of it isn't. Um, I'd even love to see one of the shoes coloured in in the front, you know, and the rest not. Because it shows the process. Um... The mind, it shows the mind working all these things out. So this kind of uh, drawing, is, you have to, you're not born knowing it, although I think Andre's a natural creative. She's taught herself this, she's been taught, she's studied it, she's, she's working things out, she's devised her own way, and it's very successful, but this takes time, this is going to be, you know difficult to learn but worth it and very very beautiful um got this one as well andre i wanted to showcase your work and a few others um like i said there's amazing artists aren't there um locally they're on our doorstep let's celebrate them and i'd like to celebrate some more people each time we do an explore and draw ah <sighs> Bless, Andre's saying she wouldn't have done it without all the encouragement from me. Um, well, I think we give to each other, don't we? But thank you for saying that. But you do, everyone in Explore and Draw, all of you, when you post your pictures, that's giving something back to me. So the exchange is equal. This one, Andre's done. Um, this was uh, at the, I believe, the third year celebration, was it? And it was... Um, Julian's pot side so there was Julian's pot there and I think that might have been but beautiful um Andre done this on some pre-coloured paper which there is a video on explore and draw and you can watch how to colour paper I'm not going to go into that today but there was a background before she started and I think that freed her up and she'd done this fabulous piece I mean it's just wonderful and again a lot of skill in that um yeah, so now, that, the whole composition of Andre's work, you know, the lady with the sickle and the artificial bunch of flowers, that was well thought out. It was a very clever picture, whether she done it, I think she done that consciously or maybe it just happened naturally. But that was real skill, really fantastic. Um, hi Charmaine, is it better quality? I'm so pleased. You help, my daughter Charmaine's helping me because um, with these live stream videos, uh, it's all techno, you know, and I can't even wear a watch. I break a computer if I look at it, so I need to help with things like that. So luckily, I've got Neil, haven't I, and Charmaine in Sweden, and she's been getting the sound right and the quality right, which um, we really do need to do these live streams. I want to improve all the time. Um, now, 
what else am I going to say? So if you don't, if you do your drawing and it doesn't end up like Andre's, don't beat yourself up. Like I said, that's going to take a lifetime of learning. The next person I want to talk about is David Upton. He's a lovely man, came to explore and draw a restoration house on his motorbike. And um really, really fantastic artist. And I saw this one online. I just fell in love with it. So let me show you. This is an oil painting that David um, completed on tea coloured paper. So he took inspiration from colouring the paper. And it's just of this coffee cup and this spoon. It's beautifully done. David knows his materials, he's learning. When you paint with oils, um, if ever you want to experiment, um, you can have a go. And he's obviously studied and works hard. I think you can tell from this painting, I hope you don't mind me saying, David, but it sort of feels like a very orderly, a very um, clean, everything's got to have its place sort of person. Uh, the spoon is there and the handle of the cup. And I think, is this person left-handed? You know, and it doesn't look like the spoon stirred the coffee yet. But it does look like um, that this cup of coffee is David's companion. It's sort of like a friend. He's painted it so sensitively that it's it's got a personality. Um, and I think it's his personality that's come through on it. And I really think that it's it's a thing of wonder. It's absolutely beautiful, David. And it's really, you do portraits, don't you? And you paint ships and you try all sorts. And um, it's really, really wonderful picture. Again, um, you know, your first painting is not going to end up like this unless, you know, you were born a genius. It, it takes time. And study to get to this and he gives himself the time and study did you just pass me something Neil yeah, don't worry, yeah. it's all right yeah um this is a uh, watercolor that David done um at explore and draw at the cathedral I think many of oh, oh no that's not my copper jug I've lost my copper jug I don't know where that is <laughs> but this is one that they had in the cathedral archives and he's done the artificial grapes. I think some of those are yours, Sean. And then he's done these lovely, and it's just beautiful. I mean, it's just beautifully done. The skill involved is fabulous. And he, he does, I think he paints quite a lot, David. He gives himself time. I think men do, don't they? They're a bit more, like, if they've got a hobby, they're going to make sure they do it. Like, I, you know, if your husband is a, a, in a band, he's going to go to that band. Or if he loves playing with bikes, he's going to be in the garage every weekend, isn't he? They've got a strength. And I think we've got to, we've got to find that inside ourselves. Um, right, what else did I want to say? Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, there's a real pace in that painting of, of that painting of that cup of coffee, David. Now... Fiona, I can't wait to talk about your work. Fiona is a friend, come to explore and draw, and I saw a painting that she'd done um, online. And it's just, I'm not going to say just, it's not just, it's of shapes and these biomorphic forms, really, these like, like little entities. And it's just this line, these lines, and then these washes that she's put into it. Straight away, I thought of Hilma Klimt um, and her paintings of this natural world, trying to understand this natural world. I feel like the whole universe are in these paintings, Fiona. You're having a conversation, aren't you, when you're making these with yourself, these shapes. You're, I've got a feeling you're working very, very freely. Um, and they're so beautiful. I saw this one. This one caught my eye because I'm looking at roses at the moment myself. Oh, I was quite jealous of this one, Fiona. Hi, Pip. How are you? Oh, I'm pleased you're enjoying it. Hi, Paul. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm pleased. Oh, let's do it. Oh, let's do it. This. Oh, yeah. Neil's telling me I've got it the wrong way round. There you go. Lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's lovely. All our creative community can talk in the comments, and I can't keep looking at them because it distracts me. But you can sort of all have a conversation with yourself, and I really enjoy reading those after when I'm relaxing. I I, I have a look at those, and it really does lift me up. So Fiona done this. I mean, it's brilliant, isn't it? I think she's put the colour down first and then she's drawn these roses. But what I love about the way that she's drawn these roses, I'm going to get up close, is that it's just the feeling of the rose, the emotion of the rose. I, I could imagine that Mark brought you these roses, Fiona, and it was just such a gift of love. It just filled your heart and you and you painted that emotion in these paintings and I said to you oh they they remind me of Macintosh Rene Macintosh and then we found out that actually Rene Macintosh uh, it was his wife the designs that he was using which was I think it was Margaret Macintosh I was meant to look that up before the show and I thought you never heard about her did you <laughs> you just heard about him but these really reminded me of Hilma Clint um, I watched a program on her the other day. If people email me, I'll send you the link. It was absolutely fantastic. You know I love her work. I posted something on the Explore and Draw page. They can't fit her into art history, you know. Um, she was before Kandinsky and Mondrian. She was painting before. They all died the same year, but she's the only one that's not in the art history. It really annoys me. Um, because she was doing, oh, she was asking big, big questions. They just can't fit her in. And I watched this um, program on her the other day, and she said this. I'm going to say it while I'm talking about your work, Fiona. Um, I know you couldn't access this video. I got it on Chrome. I don't know if you need a different download, but it says, In this moment, I am aware, living as I do in this world, that I am an atom in the universe possessing infinite possibilities of development and I want to explore these possibilities oh that's that just when I heard that I almost wanted to cry she's build she was building the universe from her inner self and receiving signals from signals from the universe to do it so she was building her universe from the inside out through this exploration, the art of self-discovery, connecting to your inner creative and then seeing where that takes you. We deny it to ourselves sometimes our whole life. I know I did. You come back to it. You, it's so empowering when you do it, when you have that conversation with yourself. It changes your life forever. It takes time. It will filter through. But the more you give yourself time for your creative self, the more passion and drive and love of it will come through. Hi, Kalia. Oh, it's lovely. I, we, Neil and I have been watching your um, videos, your singing, and it's brilliant. And I've been painting, working on a big project, and we have that in the background. Oh, I'm dancing around the front room. <laughs> I absolutely love it and I love the way you, you're very honest in it, aren't you? It's quite difficult, isn't it, everyone, being in lockdown. I think I'm all right. I think I'm doing all right. I think, oh, I'm really enjoying this. I feel a bit guilty because I think it's lovely. I've got Neil at home and then all of a sudden I have like a mini meltdown because I can't cope with it. It's just, it's, it just gets too much and then all of a sudden I get over it again. So it's lovely to hear you be so honest. Hi, Rose. Um, your Mandela's. Mandela's have been fantastic. I'm going to link you in with another friend, Miriam. She makes Mandela's and they're wonderful. Um, hi, Jackie. Oh, lovely to see you on here. Oh, this is great. Hi, Trish. Um, yes, you're saying about the Rene Macintosh. Yeah, not Rene, Margaret. It's his wife. We didn't know that, did we, Trish? Have a look at that later. Um, this is another one of Fiona's, just black and white. Look. It's like Hilma Klimt, isn't it? Like understanding the universe. I wonder what you was thinking when you painted these, uh, Fiona. I, I'm going to talk to you in a little... After this, I'm going to show you a little journal that I do. I want you to 
scan these into your computer or take photos, all of you, with your work and keep it in a little book and then write about it because Hilma Klimt, she wrote 26,000 pages of notes and I know that stuff's going on in your head and I want to know what it is. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it, to discover that book with all these in it and all the writings. Brilliant. I don't know what way up it is, but I love it. That's why I love it. And this one, I did a bit of colour. Very soft pastel colours. I, You know, I think you said once she's working through me. Well, I think she's working through you. <laughs> this, or maybe she's working for all of us. Look, look at that. Wonderful. I mean, I just think this is fabulous. All these shapes. So it's this, I'm not going to say simple line because I, I think they're quite quickly done, are they, Fiona? Um, and then the colour just dropped in. Look, they're like conversations, abstraction. When I was younger, I had my art and my poetry. My poetry was the things I wanted to say and my art was the things I couldn't put into words. And I think this is, this is like stuff, you just can't put it into words. Wonderful, absolutely fantastic. So... Like I was saying, Fiona had a go at that. She was really enjoying it. And then Mark created something and that was brilliant. I loved what he'd done. Now I want to speak to you about Debbie Pugh. Uh, she's, I think it's the Sheppy Art Society. Um, no, you didn't know, did you, Trish, about Macintosh's wife? It's, women, they've just been covered up in art history. It might get on my nerves. I'm going to keep going on about it in every session. <laughs> even one of my... Oh, I can't even say that. I'll be in trouble if he ever hears it. Oh, well, I'm not going to say it. One of the very famous art critics that I love, he forgot to mention her in the Swedish... Um, art program oh I was disgusted <laughs> anyway this is um Deborah Pugh Sheppy Art Society look at this oh just want to eat it don't you look I could imagine that like 20 feet tall Debbie all this colour acrylic paint and I think you can see all the layering in this and when you put on the acrylic paint so say you say I don't know what I want to draw I haven't got a clue well don't worry just do abstraction just paint shapes get into your own little world have a conversation with yourself it's okay you know no one has to hear it <laughs> you can just get there and get busy so you can see with these colours I talked to you about very basic colour theory, um, that the warm colours come towards you and the cool colours go away from you. And then some cool colours, you know, like some blues will be warm blues and they'll come towards you. So because Debbie's layering up, they're pulling and pushing. I, I mean, the photocopy doesn't do it justice, I'm sure, Debbie, but it's beautiful, the photocopy. I... That's almost singing and dancing, like coming out at you, very 3D, isn't it? It's just wonderful. Again, I think it, I think it goes that way, does it, Deb? Hope so. Yeah, really lovely. Look, I'm going to show you close. Now, the good thing about acrylic paints and oil paints, well, especially acrylic, because oil, you'd have to wait for them to dry. But with acrylic paints, you can actually... Um, Oh, I'm, the problem is I've got the video here showing the time lapse and then the other video I can see it at the corner of my eye it's very distracting <laughs> so yeah acrylic paints you can paint on top of each other um, and so if you go you know you do a dark colour you can go on top with a, um, a light colour and then you can just eradicate what you've done underneath so you can just keep painting over the top um, hi Sean Oh, you want a maxi dress in that print? Yeah. Uh, it, we might, what was it? Um, Sonia Delaunay. You liked her outfits as well, didn't you? I think so. I think you could have a dress in that lovely print. Or maybe a dress in the print of Fiona Hill as well. Maybe you meant that. I'd like a shirt or a blouse in that. Oh, skirt. That would be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I, all of these, couldn't they? And Debbie's, look, I've got this one as well. I took advantage. I asked you if I could use one of your pictures and then I stole all of your pictures. I hope that's all right. I know it's ownership. 
<laughs> I have to watch that in the art world, you know. You can't. If I was doing someone's famous work, I might have to get their permission. So, this one, look at this. These are wonderful, bold colours. Debbie's very experimental. Um, I think she tries all different sorts. And she's just playing and experiment. It's all fun and playful. It's like a child, you know, testing out these materials. Let me see. See what I mean? You, you, it, look at that. It's like the windows to the soul, isn't it? And all the lovely colours coming through. See what she's done there? She used the warm colours to draw you in. And the blue colours, I always get this back to front, the blue colours sort of like is the frame. So the warm colours draw you in and the blue, the cool colours frame it. So you can really play about with colours. So although the basic colour theory is warm colours come towards you and cool colours go away from you, you can use them in different ways. And when you next go to an art gallery or you look at an art gallery online, I want you to notice how the artists use colour and have a conversation with yourself about that because that will inform your own practice. Isn't it wonderful, this... I, it's just stunning. Debbie, please forgive me if I've got it the wrong way up. I like looking at it all different ways. Look at that. It's magical, isn't it? Until recent years, I didn't really like abstract art. But as I've got older, and I, you find out more information, and now I love it. And I look at all these colours, and it's just fabulous. Um, different colour, kinds of paint, so acrylic paint that you might buy um, just £2 a tube will give you one effect and then if you spend a little bit more money on um, some acrylic paints you might get a stronger pigment um, and I, I don't know if these are very high pigmented paints but they're really really wonderful Debbie, fantastic love that um i know you've been working with gesso like under textures with stuff haven't you and that's been creating different looks and, and that's worth playing with these sort of impastos that you can put um i know you've been playing with watercolor and gouache and collage as well you sort of mix it all up don't you and what i love about your work debbie is it shows the layers so you might use something in charcoal and then you go, you, 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 you work into it and then you use like a pen over the top of it or a paint over the top of it and you see and then you use a rubber, don't you? And you remove a little bit. So I'm going to show some of that later. Hopefully I remember. And um, yeah, I really love the way that you play and experiment. So be inspired by Andre and David um, by Debbie and Fiona and if you're watching this and you think oh I'm going to have a go of that if one thing says something to you then take that one thing and, and run with it all right because I don't want to sit here and paint a picture of a rose and you all go away and paint a picture of a rose it's not really what I'm interested in although that is a lovely way to experiment and try materials just take what you want out of today all right and, and maybe watch it back another time and take something else out of it hi David oh you're welcome I absolutely love your work David um oh you're doing the sky portrait challenge oh people keep saying you should go on that don't they <laughs> I'm going to have a look at that later, David. You can watch this back later. Um, it's really lovely having you come to explore and draw. We don't get a lot of men. I wish more men would come. I do like men. <laughs> I know I'm always going on about female artists, but actually I do like men as well. I like men artists as well. <laughs> I couldn't do any of this without Neil. He's my techno guy. He's sitting there helping me. Look at this one that Debbie done. The colour. Oh, let me do that. That's it. The colours on it. I wonder if you've drawn around a, if you've drawn around something. No, you, I don't know. I don't know how you've done that, Debbie. But you see the pull and the push. So the red comes right out at you, doesn't it? And the green is that in between colour and the yellow. I just think these are fabulous. Just make shapes. Right. So the last artist I want to talk to you about is um. It's. 12.40 already, I've been chatting for ages, haven't I? Um, it's Claire Merrick, 
that's the good thing about me and being live stream, isn't it, Neil? I can talk. <laughs> I think that's my advantage on something like this. I hope you're enjoying it. Everyone's, I hope you're reading these comments, the artists that I've mentioned. I think people are loving your work. You're inspiring them. Um, so watch out. I'm on Facebook. I see your work when you post it. And next time I'll feature a few other local artists. So Claire Merrick is a friend of mine and she's an artist and a poet. I think she says herself that she picked up a paintbrush like two years ago. Um, and she just had three years ago and she hasn't stopped painting since. Um, she, she does these wonderful pictures and she goes out for her uh, exercise and she takes photos. She takes the most stunning photos. Some, and she loves flowers and she brings them home. So this is a photograph, look. Isn't that poetic? I mean, it's stunning, isn't it? She's one of them people, she's good at everything, apart from we always have a laugh because she's terrible at clay, aren't you, Claire? <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, anyway, I bet you get good at that. You'll go on one class and you'll be brilliant at that as well. Um, so she quite often takes a picture of a flower on like a light background or a black. Sorry, Claire, I couldn't print off the black ones because I take too much ink. And then she'll paint. So she might use Japanese watercolours and then paint on black paper, maybe one of the daisies. Um, and then she'll do a bit of collage and she'll often put one word with it. She's very good. So this one is a collage, look at that. And it's got the words renewal on it. And it's just stunning. She's got all these lovely flowers, the real love of nature, isn't it, Claire? So she quite often photographs really colourful flowers. She buys the most exquisite flowers and she'll give it like a black backdrop. And then she'll use that photograph to inform her artwork. And then she might turn this into a card. And she used to be in marketing and she'd, get, she'd go to all the florists and different shops and she'd get that card in the shops and they'd start selling. You're brilliant, Claire. I've got, I need you in my PR for Explore and Draw when we go international. <laughs> yeah, so she's really brilliant. She's really um, resourceful, you know. And she had an exhibition last year um, at the Pie Factory in Market. It's brilliant. You sold loads, didn't you, Claire? And you meant to have another one coming up. But oh, I hope lockdown is, I hope you do get to do that exhibition. But if not... We're going to appreciate going to exhibitions, aren't we? When we get out of lockdown, we're going to really love it. Just being able to be around people. I think I'm all right. I spend a lot of time on my own um, normally. And it's lovely having Neil here. But it is nice to just chat to people and see your friends, isn't it? Um, yeah, we saw Andre the other day, didn't we, Andre? We took you some eggs and we just spoke on the doorstep, didn't we? And that was wonderful, wasn't it? We really enjoyed that, Neil and I. Oh, oh, I'm pleased you're enjoying this. Um, this is a, a picture that Claire done of some trees. So she went in the forest, she took some uh, photographs of the trees and then she done like just a... Uh, the, just the tree lines I wanted to print them all off Claire but I couldn't um yeah just the lines of the trees and then she started dropping in the color and then she done all the background it was lovely um if you look on Claire Merrick's site she, you can see the process of each stage because you take photos all the way through um you're encouraged to do that at college Claire and that's really good because then you can see the process so I think you'll all agree but that's a wonderful collection of work. And, um, oh, let's do this. You all inspire me. When I see these posts online, I think, oh, good for you. You know, you're giving yourself time to connect with your inner creative. Um, yeah, have a look, um, Clear at Claire's process. It's really good. I just wanted to show you these quickly before I move on to the uh, first part. I'm going to maybe run this for an hour. New time would run away from me. Um, I had a beautiful book uh, gifted to me from Kathy Keith. You see, I just love it. I thought if I've got, but I've always shied away from keeping a journal. But um, and I've most probably got loads of them around the house with one picture in each. But because I've got this one off of Kathy and it's sort of pocket size. 
I take that and when I go somewhere I just I don't always take it but it's nice to get in the habit Sean you were saying about a journal weren't you you watched something online or a course on journal and it really inspired you so I'll go somewhere and I'll just do like a um a drawing in it these are like some of my automatic drawings and um, it's lovely. I go somewhere and I, I, Neil might be taking photos and I take photos, but then I'll just sit down, have a drink and just do a little sketch. So these are quite nice. Um, I, yeah, I'm not going to show you them all. I was doing this one at Kew Garden. Oh, actually, it wasn't. It was hey. in, uh, no, it was the Eden Project. Um, and then a child came up. Was it? Yeah, a child came up and wanted to have a go at painting and they painted this. So I had that in the book. People get interested, especially children. They know, they love creativity. Um, yeah, this one's interesting. All the little shapes. And that one says, the hands that hold the book with their own life story, the fingerprints. So I like to put a little bit of joy in. I do some workings out in it. And this is my most recent one, you know, on Beltane. So that one was just a little automatic drawing. And then this one was on our walk the other day. Um, I've, I have this, uh, I know this is, it's, these are quite nice. I'm going to get art companies to sponsor me and then I can tell you all about their materials and hopefully they give me some. But you see these pens, they've got water in and a brush. I've lost the lid, but you can stick that in your top pocket, take a little pad out and then these little watercolours, they come, so I should get paid to do this, shouldn't I? They come in these little pots so you can take that out and then you've got all your need. So that's all you need it's like your little survival kit your art survival kit and you can take that somewhere so that's a nice idea um also your smaller pads so you can oh yeah that's a buy me a coffee if you like the video <laughs> i'm gonna link buy me a coffee um it's already there oh it's already there neil's put the uh at the top of the site and i appreciate your donations thank you very much so little pads are good because then you haven't got so much to fill up I used to do these for a pound. Um, yeah, and then what I done, I know a lot of you are doing art already, so I'm not, I, I don't want to come across as, you know, not, I do realise that a lot of you are doing your art and, and you are doing a lot of work. Um, I just want to, I want to talk to you about this book very quickly because if you have been doing art and you've got bits scattered all around the house like I have, why don't you photograph them, print them off or scan them and get photograph? you know, document them. Because I bought this lovely book um, the other day and I just, I've been doing that with my work and then writing a little bit about what they were about. And I thought that was a lovely way for me to keep my work all in one place haven't got it all in there but I've started doing it you see that that's quite a nice idea and then I write down what they mean for me and I thought that'd be lovely you know for my children to read through this one day when I'm not here anymore and they can just see you know all of these little things so I do that that's a lovely way to keep I've, I've really enjoyed this is the first journal really apart from the one Kathy gave me that I've really kept up I only started it a little while ago I got this printer and I got free ink for um, a year and then it's only $7.99 and they send the ink out all the time so that's really good so oh it's it's only 10 minutes and then it's an hour so this has gone really really quickly um, I know an hour is a long time out of your day but I've shown you lots of things to inspire you um, I wanted to talk to you about just making your mark um, hatching and cross hatching that's one that I done okay just you know when you're on the phone and you're doodling and you just make all these marks you might write your name and then you do a little mark here and a little mark there and they just grow this is what these do I used to always do it on my school books at school and I just love that picture this is one that I've just done 
just all little marks, splattered some paint about, and then just done some lines. I was in the shower the other day, um, no, I was in the bath, and I looked in the mirror, and it had all misted up, and there was a face in it, so I got straight out of the bath, um, and then I just tried to draw it. I had some pre-coloured paper. There's another video on that. Like I said, you can watch that in the videos. And, um, and then I just done this face out of charcoal. It came out exactly how it was. Um, I studied uh, portraiture for a while myself online. So I'm, I'm getting quite good with faces from certain angles. And it just, the, the paper sort of lent itself to it. This is a hatching and cross hatching. Oh, I'm not going to talk about those. I haven't got time. So I was meant to be doing an explore and draw dreams with Edwina Jacques, but we couldn't do it. We, we will do it when we go back to some kind of normal. Hopefully we can have events at some point. Um, and this this was from a dream. So I just eyes are quite good to practice. OK, now. Let's get on to just, oh, I'm pleased you like the face. Hi, Claire. Yeah, start the journal, document your work. It doesn't matter. We've, I've even put sizes and dates. I write my date on the back of the picture now. Now, these are just marks. My daughter's, look, just, just marks, quick little marks. So let me just show you. So when I talk to you, about um, hatching and cross hatching what I'm talking is about just making a mark so you know your hatching is just this way can you see this <clears throat> and your cross hatching is this way and then there's so many different ways that you can hatch and cross hatch to make a mark Okay, and when you come to an explore and draw, as you know, in my survival kit, I have this, I'll get them in a minute, I've got the originals here because they don't glare. All these different ways you can make a mark. So just with a pen, even a biro or a pencil, you can make all these different marks. And as you use ones that curve round, you can show that something is curving through making that mark. So if you was doing something like this, you could you could curve you could curve these. Okay? And you can build up tones so when they're close together and then they come further apart. Okay? So you can play about with just line and the more that you build into that line the more tone you'll get now I was watching Hill McClint paint the other day and she was painting um, with a brush on a stick now you know when I done the salt dough egg I done it and I was really doing it slowly and I thought she must have done these paintings slowly no she didn't um, she done three a week didn't she Neil 10 feet tall and when you see them they're outstanding um, so I've put this charcoal on this paintbrush you see I've taped it with a bit of masking tape so I'm not to say that about your hatching and cross hatching like this but what I'm to say about your drawing so say like I was just going to make a mark it's quite um, it's quite it's quite strange making a mark with something on the end of a stick yeah it, it gives you a freedom if you was working big I'd love to work big but it just removes itself from it so with charcoal say you was playing so you have a play with your pencil and then with your pen I've got a pen here So because that's you're moving your whole arm when you're using something like this, okay? And then with this, you're just, it's a bit closer, isn't it? You've got a bit more control there, okay? And then what you can do is you can see, is that water soluble? So I know this pen, 
that does that is actually water soluble so when i add pen to that that will move now some pens don't they don't move but when they do move it's lovely it gives a lovely wash and with like chalks as well say you just make a shape like that and then you're just going to color it in they like debbie pew just with your colors and this is charcoals that I'm using. So I want you to go to your go to your art supplies. Don't want you to spend hours. Oh, I know I've got that watercolor set and spend all day looking for it and then not doing it. That's just another way of not actually giving yourself. Say you can only find a few things for now. Then play with those few things, making a mark, making a line, making an abstract shape, playing with color. So I'm just putting those on. Now I'm just doing this very, very quickly. But you could have some music on, you could just be playing with shapes. And then, you know, you can see, did you know that you can actually use a bit of water on your... And it, that's not a great brush, actually. Let's get this. And by doing this, playing about with your brushes, you can actually see what brush is good for what because all the brushes have got all different names i've never been able to remember them but what i do know is i use different brushes for different things so you can move that about and then if you're doing something that's with the wet so this is the dry with the pen but then as soon as you add the wet have a hair dryer and dry it off And then you can work into the next layer with that okay now i was doing one and i thought i'll do a little cityscape i'm glad i've done this now because we've not got a lot of time so i just done um, this is on photocopying paper you see it so i just done this little imaginary city using those hatching those cross hatching those different lines with a pen and then i washed in with some watercolors just by washing that in with these, moving the ink about. And then I just done this very quick, like almost little stick woman. And I quite like the way she come out. Look, she looks like she's really dressed up. She looks like Kathy gone out all dressed up in an outfit, not as much colour as you though, okay? <laughs> and then she's gone on the trees and I just worked playing with the colour. i had done this dog. It didn't come out right at all so I just used a bit of acrylic white paint so it dried and then I used acrylic white paint over the top and then I just made it like a long haired dog because I couldn't work that bit out I looked at um, dogs after you know what I said if you get frustrated with something don't worry you can always research it after and I started looking at the skeleton of, an, of a dog and I started sort of planning it out a little bit more oh there you go I have little sketches just playing um, I didn't want to spend too much time learning that because I don't want to just learn all about drawing dogs or there's all you know you might have that you just are drawn to flowers or you are just drawn to you you do love doing portraits or you love doing eyes or you know have a go at just what you enjoy doing and then just see where it takes you um let me show you did i have oh i don't know where i've done with it oh here they are so that could just be with pencils and pens and with charcoals yeah that's the one i've done so you could make a little imaginary landscape i don't want you to worry too much if it goes wrong it's not quite right you just have a bit of fun um lastly just before we round up these are some acrylic ones i think it might even be oils okay and these are just experiments. I split the paper up into three. I done one with the sponge, okay? I done one with the palette knife, and then I just done one smooth. So all these different textures, you see? So plain. So that was just brushed on, 
that was done with a palette knife so you could brush on your paint your acrylic paint and then you can get a palette knife and just make some marks on it afterwards okay and then you can push back with a sponge as well I was going to show you all of these but I want to really stop it an hour do you think Neil yeah and so you can just I'm not I could have shown you all this but just I think we'll do another one on just acrylic painting I'm going to leave you always wanting a little bit more <laughs> and then we'll do one on oil paints okay um yeah and and you can so you can build up in layers in washes over the top of this so remember if you're using pen and pencil you could then go in with chalks and then you could go in with watercolors and you could use water wash those all in then once that's dried with your hair dryer you can go in with acrylic paint which is like a plastic paint and then you could even go over the top of that with oil paint okay and but you can't go the other way round okay so you can't then go acrylic paint over oil paint or watercolour over oil paint okay but you can go pencil chalk watercolour acrylic oil okay so you can build it up hi Lorraine nice to see you I'm pl I hope you're gonna have a go I want everyone to just create something it might be pattern shape it might be a drawing anything work on a small size and then start up do lots of experiments um, yeah I think that's it oh I did want to say one thing um watch it from the beginning if if you haven't and there's lots of other videos on the site um if you've enjoyed it then uh buy me a coffee please I appreciate that if you're able um Clea Llewellyn is on at 3 p.m I can't wait to watch that I did want to mention one product I'm not pushing it, but I couldn't live without this stuff. Um, I've got a large tub, but uh, I know you can buy small ones, okay? But it's called the Master Brush Cleaner. If you're going to use acrylic paint or oil paints, oh, I re this saves so much money because you just, it's like a soap. You just wash your brushes as much as you can get off of them, okay? And then you you put your brush in this you mix it up and then you just keep pushing the paint out of it and then washing it and that absolutely conditions your brushes and it's fantastic but a big pot like that is about 50 quid but it lasts your ages you can get small pots but that's really if i was to have anything in my kit i'd need that because it saves your brushes um acrylic paint will destroy your brushes you must even if you used a bit of normal soap or washing up liquids don't use hot water but you know get that out of the paint and make sure the paint brushes are always in the water otherwise you'll go back to do something creative and all your brushes be ruined um have a go yourself have a little um play around today be creative um share this video um we just want to make the Explore and Draw audience get bigger and bigger, especially now where a lot of us are in isolation. Uh, hi, Carol. Uh, you've been doing um, some yoga with Denny. She's amazing, isn't she? I've done a few the other day. My stomach It's like, oh, but she's brilliant, isn't she? Um, lovely to see you. I'm, I'm really pleased that um, you've all joined me today. Hi, Jane. You've been doing a quick self-portrait while I've been on. I'm so, that just makes my heart jump. Skip a beat. That's fantastic. Um, have a go. Themselves. Yeah, have a go yourselves with painting and drawing. Whatever you want to do. Just make a mark, okay? Have a conversation with yourself. Um, play around with the material. See what you've got in the cupboard. Get it all out. Pull it in a little box. And make sure that you don't make any excuses. You're going to, every time that little voice in your head pops up, I'm going to read you something from Hill McClint before you go. I've written something down here. You must learn to ignore your fear. For without the will to believe in yourself, nothing good will happen. That's from Hill McClint herself. So believe in yourself. Stay beautiful. I miss you all so much. I can't wait till we all meet again. And um, send me your 
uh, ideas on classes. I might do an acrylics, might do an oil paint. Going to try and do them every time there's going to be an explore and draw. And I'll see you next time. Make sure that you have a go. Whatever you create today or in the next few days, next few weeks, share with me, message me. Okay, I'll stick it in an album. We'll share it online. And, I'll, and maybe I'll show your work next time. Much love. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.